What is up everybody? My name is Richard Terrell. I go by Kirby Kid and you are watching Dio Live. It's a daily stream show. We talk about game design. The conversations start on our Discord, which you're welcome to join us, but otherwise we do these daily streams and we cover different topics, but right now we're in the middle of a series on combat. And we started the series just sort of looking at different um, cases for combat, trying to figure out how simple can combat get while still being combat. We looked at how people talk about combat, um, and then we considered, what did we consider last time? How we should proceed talking about combat. So like, what's a good way of measuring combat in, in, in a way that's um, effective and constructive for comparing a lot of different types of games. So now we're on the next step. And I think a big element of combat, uh, one of the seemingly most interesting or most important elements uh, is talking about skill and how skillful the combat is, yet most people lack the language to talk about things that take skill and they're utterly bumbling around trying to draw comparisons between unlike things because they haven't broken it down, they haven't looked at it clearly. Uh, a long time ago I made this d -card system, there's a T that you're missing. It stands for Dexterity, Knowledge, Adaptation, Reflex, and Timing. And this is the way it breaks down. Subcategories for each. And some of these subcategories have even more subcategories. So specificity gets pretty fine grain. And I think I, I tried to design these categories to where they were um, distinct from each other. And used life experiences to try to figure out, well, I've seen people that have a lot of this, but not a lot of that. Or I've seen people like excel in one area and have a deficiency in another so you know the expression of these different types of skills seem to uh, be accurately described as having some of this and not a lot of that and trying to make as few categories as possible that are meaningful the design of this is not so important um, what you really need to focus on right now is in general what this system is about and what it's uh, trying to move towards what it's trying to do and I designed this system to be universal so it doesn't just apply to video games it applies to learning of all kinds hobbies and skills and talent or and activities of all all kinds and um, it gives you a really good way to compare something like playing the violin or piano to playing a video game instead of just saying oh they're so different you're like yeah they're different but come on like we gotta get the, the ground running on trying to compare the two especially for someone like me who can play and play both and be like, well, I find a bunch of these things similar, also some very specific differences. So I needed this language to even articulate that in the first place. I haven't found anyone else that talks about skill in any decent way uh, or with such specificity, with such sort of scope and a mindful eye towards sort of uh, how we learn, some educational psychology in the background of this, and um, really trying to bridge connections between such disparate life hobbies and experiences so i hope you enjoy this uh, we're going to take it a little slow i got articles on my blog that explain it all in 19 i'll show you 19 different uh parts here we go so the skill of multiplayer right here and as you can see examination of skill series started talking about knowledge and I move on to each part and it goes down, 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 then I have some interesting conclusions. So it's 19 different parts really getting deep down into this thing. So if you're curious, the reading's there. Otherwise, I'm going to go over a lot of it uh, on this stream. Um, that's a decent way to break it down. Oh, not that one. Uh, so we have... Wait, am I still, am I still playing this on Twitch? No, I'm not. Okay, cool. So we have knowledge is where I generally start. Uh, it's the one that people can wrap their brains around. Ah, eh, knowledge. Uh, the easiest. When I say things like long-term memory, people are like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And when I say things like short-term memory, which is now like working memory, people are like, yeah, I've heard of that too. And muscle memory, people, these are all just kind of things we've all heard before, at least partially. And then you get into the territory of uh, some other things like your ability to analyze the information. It's a general word, but yes, it's being applied generally here. Like, how do you process it? Uh, we lean on Bloom's taxonomy, which I'll, find, I'll show you here, to sort of subdefy that analyze category even further. 
Um, what's a nice graphic that I like to use all the time? View image and new tab, baby. Right here. So we use Bloom's Taxonomy to break down that um, analyze part, and you can even break that down to these six parts and remembering, understanding, applying, analyze, see there's analyze, evaluate, create. So it's kind of all moving up, up, and up in this little pyramid type structure uh, when we're talking about that sub facet of analyze skill. And code and decode is your ability to create heuristics and, and uh, chunk data. Uh, just all these different kinds of techniques and uh, ways for you to get that info in your head better and what it takes to unpack that info once you have it in there. And then channels are the ability to keep multiple lines of thought or information streams uh, consistent in your head without crossing them up. Some really interesting exercises for doing this. Um, but this is pretty much all you need to talk about your knowledge uh, skill. In a game, long-term memory pretty much makes up the bulk of it. Most games, I mean, most activities uh, require you to have something remembered or memorized in order to do well, and you stack upon those memories when you build new tips and tricks and heuristics. Uh, our short-term memory is very small, so we're almost always using this. And um, I want I back in the day when I was still researching this and thinking about it. Uh, my brother and I made these different games to test these things. So it's, it's one thing to talk about it, and I can say like, oh, there's these are very distinct, and some people excel in some areas, and some people don't in others. Yeah, but it's another thing to actually help you see that in a very sort of firsthand way. So like, we built this these D card games, um, one game, one uh, facet of D card at a time, starting with knowledge, and. This is when we were still very new to Game Maker. These graphics are so bad, <laughs> but I don't care, right? It gets the job done. Um, we built, we took a common game like Simon Says, and we built variations on it that are supposed to test different aspects. Is this sounding familiar to you? Because hopefully it is. I've been doing this kind of thing for a long time, it seems, and in Light, and it's not the first time I took an existing game and built things around it for the purpose of illustrating concepts and enlightening people. So. Uh, these are some of my scores for the various games, and they're organized by color-coded category. You can read more on that. Uh, they don't really make sense to you right now, so we're going to start playing the game, and I can explain as I go. You are free to also play this game. The download link is on the blog to the right here that says Downloads, right? Ooh. So use it. Uh, and if you do play it, share your scores with me. That'd be great, because it... It's really just, um, it makes for a really good conversation, and everything kind of starts from there and revolves from there. So I'm going to do this ad source, game capture, knowledge, there it is. Wow, what a terrible, terrible game capture. This game is um, a small little window on my screen, and we didn't know how to do widescreen, we didn't know how to do a lot of stuff, so... <laughs> So I'm just gonna like this, and I'm going to like that. Sound effects brought to you by me. Made by me. Okay, I'll just put this in the background, and I'll I'll line it up a little bit. How cool would that be if I could pull that off? Yeah, that's pretty cool. Okay, we made this game. Um, it's got a standard game of Simon Says. Oh, my mouse isn't even lined up. What? That's going to be annoying. It kind of works. So we got a standard game on the left. We got these variations on the right. Um, you know, here's some info for how the game works. And here are the records. And we have no scores, as you might imagine. I don't even know how to... How to oh yeah, I, d I did this mouse face scrolling because I didn't know what I was doing. Fun. And this song is called uh, Bach Invention number something. I, I play this on piano, that's why I put this in here because I love that song. So here's the basic idea. You can repeat the patterns. And as you probably know, the longer you go, the harder it is to remember these different strings. I'm using the keyboard for input right now. 
And I'm also talking, so I, I don't expect this to go very well very long. But this is just establishes a baseline. And each thing makes a unique sound and it moves and it has the light, so like... Uh, it's supposed to help <laughs> every piece of stimulus matters. One, two. Um, we'll see how far I go. No! Okay, calm down. Uh, there's a retry button in the corner that has this weird symbol, because, like, really that means retry, but anyway. Let's go back. Ten. Yeah, I got a ten. Cool. So, you play the base game, you try to get uh, as high of a score as possible, but then it really gets interesting once you hit these variations. Let's look at the reds. So now it only gives you the new note when it's um giving you a sequence. Let's take a look at this. Funny little menu transitions. So like, oh, yeah, up. And then they just give you the new note. So you have to kind of, instead of relying on listening to the sequence and refreshing it every time, you're just building on that knowledge every single time. Now of course you get the repetition of you inputting it, but it's half as much. Man, this is this pattern. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Wow. Okay, so now it's so like, yeah, so it's clearly slowing me down. Um, one, two, three, four, one, two, ring, 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 and I died. So yeah, you can feel the difference, um, what the repetition and the feedback difference between this one and the one before it. Like, oh, just uh, getting the new one, you have to, let's see if I can, let's see if I can, boop. But the, the new information you go in, I'm kind of thinking about changing muscle memory to linear memory, but that's really not important to discuss right now. But every time you get a new piece of information, instead of just listening to the sequence and kind of feeding that information to your brain and sort of uh, reinforcing the, the information you already have, you have to take it and then add it to it. So you don't get a reinforcement, but you have to do a thing where you add a piece to something that already exists in your mind. And that's why it feels different. That's why your results here will be different than your standard uh, scores. Which is kind of neat, right? Ooh. And then we have variations like two notes at a time, three notes at a time, random strings. So like this one gives you um, in chunks of two. So this was kind of an interesting exercise uh, on how presenting things in groups will help you or hurt you when you're trying to remember it. Like phone numbers are always presented in the same. <laughs> this sounds like da 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 da. Wait, what is that thing? Ah. See, it sounds like music to me with certain kinds of repetitions. And that kind of helps me remember everything. Oh, that's cool. So, double. Please give me another double red. Oh no, green, blue. So, da 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 like that. So yeah, you can definitely see that it's different for me right now than it was before. Um, this is kind of funny. 
Okay, so then it's like da 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 Okay, so it's reversing on the top, so da 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 Oh, so it got some nice little return reversal. So da 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 Oh, double top. Uh, we're making the game abstract, so really, you don't have to have any previous history playing video games. You don't have to really think about much, but just the challenge itself. Um, then it was like, yep. It was repeating some of the the same patterns they had before, but slightly different. So we can say that modulated, that'd be kind of cool. Dun, dun, modulate. Back to back down to the um, original key. Ba -da 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 -dum. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Now I have to think like what happened after that. Then. Then it had double red and double yellow, weird. So when you're getting it fed to you piece by piece, if you want to group them into larger uh, chunks, you have to figure out where your start and end cap is. And right there, I lost where my start and end cap was, so I had to kind of... Oh, the last one was green blue. I need to pay attention. Um... Oh, wait. I didn't even put it back on the screen. How dare. Fernando, why didn't you tell me? <laughs> well, it's not like there's much to look at anyway, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> That's funny. We'll keep going. Let's see if I remember it. <laughs> And then it return a phrase. Yeah. And when you get to the end much faster than you thought you did, you're like, wait, aren't there more notes? You're like, well, when you chunk them, it all feels like one. Or the chunks that are large feel much smaller. Is it doing the same? It's doing the same turn that it does in the middle of the, the phrase. So, da 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 no! Gone forever. So I'm not gonna do the three re repetitions for you. Three notes at a time, it's the same thing with three. Uh, here is random strings, so instead of giving you uh, one, two, or three, it gives you one, two, or three. <laughs> You'll see. Makes sense. Oh, so all the strings are random. So that's what this one does. So no, no more memorizing things. You just have to every time refresh your brain. Which is harder than it seems because you want to let or keep. You want to keep holding on the information. And then quickly dumping it is part of what the decode is. I have to do that one by sound. Whatever. <laughs> so the reds are your 
more or less standard variations that you might find. You get to the greens. Reverse order, delete a color, swap a color, switch two colors. Now this is interesting, because these are probably some of the hardest ones in the game. Um, reverse order is just, they, they, what do they do? <laughs> Let's just play and see what happens. Uh, and I, I say they, but I mean me. Yeah, they, they gave you the sequence forward, you have to input it backwards. Except for that one, because it was the same. So this is just, you're still learning the string like before, but you have to do one bit of transformation before it happens. Barely paying attention. It takes so much more brain energy yeah, to do that one. Much more. It's strange. Just so like, yeah, everything costs something mentally, right? When you're really understanding the information going to your brain, the information coming out of it, right? How you're manipulating it. Everything costs something and every way you do something is, uh, stresses your brain in a different way. So that one, even though it was pretty much like a standard game, just doing it in reverse order, um, that one little piece of transformation on the in information just takes up so much more brain power, it's ridiculous. Uh, delete a color, you'll see. You'll see. So it gives you a sequence to start, right? And then it has red. Don't play red, so you just play yellow. And then red again. And you're actively deleting different ones. And sometimes it doesn't give you one to delete. It's important, it's smart to keep the gaps in there. But, you know. Oop, they said yellow. I wasn't even paying attention. That's what I get. Uh, swap a color, switch two colors. So the swap a color is where they, they, me, whatever doesn't matter so replace yellow with red there's no yellow so I'm no big deal right replace green with yellow no big deal again you're making it easy replace yellow with green and then you replace it and then you forget about that replace red with green that's like a mirror flip oops wow hurt. Ah! So, <laughs> so much harder. Oh my gosh, my, my brain feels weird. Uh, switch two colors is even more devious. As the symbol kind of indicates. You have to sw swap two colors. So blue and red right there. That was the opposite rhythm. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that hurts. Don't even know. Don't even know. It's way too late. Variation 3, visuals only, no sounds, sounds only, no visuals. So if you've been relying primarily on one versus the other, right? If you're good at music, if you're good at sounds, or recording things in your head, you you might be worse at this. If you're good at looking at patterns, I do a bit of everything. So I'm looking at mirror flip translations, I'm listening to it, I'm making all kinds of connections as best I can. Uh, so this one sees if you have a weakness on one side. And these are really interesting. So. Just like with Enlighten, I encourage people to name shapes because when you name it, it engages more of your mind, it makes a more uh, lasting, engaging impression, and then language itself is a powerful tool for recalling 
uh, information and organizing things conceptually. Likewise, in this old style, old school, knowledge based game, we created some ways to help you think about chunking, help you think and do it. So like this one's called keyboard coding, right? Um, there's only three colors, right? So the, you can hit any row that you see uh, on the keyboard. The yellow is kind of hard to see. So, if, and then the, the trick is to use the sequence to spell out letters to help you remember. So we have red, yellow, yellow. Like what could we spell? Red, yellow. So there's not a lot of verbs on the bottom line. So maybe. <laughs> yeah, I thought about rearranging the way the colors were distributed on the keyboard after, you know, making it. And I'm like, well, screw it. So this is not a very friendly combination to start, but we can do it. Red, yellow, yellow. How about... <laughs> um... YBM. Okay. So we're going to open up with our young black men. And then we're going to add some more to it. So young black men. Uh, we're just going to put a green for now. Okay. So young black men are, but without the E. Young black men are. Let's hope we get another red. No. So now I may have to change what I code. Um, okay, young black men arm, A-R-M, that should work. Young black men arm. And now I'm making a word picture, or a picture word, and I get an extra syllable to do whatever I want with, but it's yellow, so young black men arm. Uh, pick a random syllable for now. Okay, so yellow to green are uh, you can say like B A or V A. That's fine. Young black men arm buck. Arm bar. Young black men arm bar whatever that is so it's a little more slow going but it kind of stresses different ways to chunk information and if you're just not good with abstract directions or sound hopefully you're good enough to remember your own sentences the last one's red so young black men arm bar red and there's no time limit because we really wanted you to think um, double red in the last one arm bar hopefully get three reds so y o arm bar yo young black man arm bar yo yeah yes we're gonna put you as the final word young black man arm bar you <laughs> Yes, your instead of you. Young black men arm bar your. And then when you start anticipating things and, and changing the words around and hoping for certain colors, that's when the system's really working. So young black men arm bar your. Um, your. We're just gonna pick a green then. Young black men arm bar your green. And you can do it fast. You might mess up, but who cares? Okay, green, red. Uh, who we got in chat? Who, who's who's bugging me? I, Fernando's back. Uh, maybe he switched back over to his other computer. Um, and where's the uh, Twitch chat? Even though I doubt it. Oh, somebody's actually in it. CPU James was in it, and I wasn't even reading. Yeah, he just he just got onto his PC. <laughs> so. Oh no, what were the colors? Young black men arm bar your, your, um, well. This is where we lose. 
It was green. It was, it was green. I didn't say. It was red. Green, red. Green, red, yellow. We need a word with green, red, yellow. Uh, arm your gun. <laughs> it's a play on words. Arm guns. So young black men arm bar your gun. Haha, <laughs> that's funny. Yellow at the end. So young black men arm bar your gun. And this one's a lot easier to remember in the long term. I mean, for me, words really stick in my mind, so uh Arm bar your gun, no. Young black man, arm bar your gun, yo. Oh, it was no, not yo. I said yo, but it doesn't matter. That's enough of that. And you can see there my level of comfort for doing that while talking and just getting distracted and coming back to it. Much more solid than what you saw in the other games. Uh, using your different parts of your brain uh, and using the tools that are there, really important. Uh, this one's called Crack the Code. I think it was inspired by Brain Warp, but you have 60 seconds to figure out which sequence. So this one's crazy. Oh my gosh. Two funny things can happen. So you're trying to figure out the correct sequence that's obviously not known to you. You're putting in colors and you're doing a lot of trial and error, right? A lot of it. And you're most likely going to get it wrong instead of get it right because you have a one in four chance every time you want to advance the sequence. Two other funny things happen. As you get longer, you realize that in your exploratory state of just remembering which ones you've tried and which ones you haven't, it automatically shrinks the uh, mental capacity you have to do this. And then when you find the correct one, you're like, okay, cool. But if you don't remember it and you don't pause or take the time to remember it, um, it's worthless. Like you're trying to get a long sequence, not just find the next one and quit. Um, and then when you get a sequence of right guesses in a row, that could really jack you up. <laughs> Like, at the end, I was like, oh, no, I got the 9. I wasn't even paying close enough attention to, to pull that off. But that's called Crack the Code. It's really funny. 60 seconds. And the last one is Long Term Marathon. So this one's hilarious. By hilarious, I mean hilarious. Uh, you input an input like that. And then it's two yellows. But you got to wait an entire minute before you can input the next one. So this is really testing your ability to be like, you know how when you're studying for a test and then like right before the teacher hands you the uh, the booklet or whatever, the, the pit test, you're like looking over all your, your facts and words and then putting it away really quick, you grab your test and you try to as quickly as possible jot down some notes and remember it. That's a funny little technique because you realize you didn't memorize it as well as you could have and your brain can only hold things for so long so you're trying to maximize that. Well this game is designed to uh, fight against that, right? You have to wait a minute in between every input every single time. So if you were just trying to like barely keep the rhythm going or the sequence going in your mind, we'll see how long you can hold on to it. It's double yellow. It's easy to start. It's easy. Thank you. So I can eat a cracker. I can play Smash Brothers. I can keep streaming. Whatever. Still got 45 seconds. <laughs> so I played this game 
in college. That's right. Played my own game in college. It was a history class. It was boring. <laughs> and I was like, I'm going to play my own game. And as I wait for the t timer to go down, I'm going to pay attention in class. Win-win. And um, I was doing so well. I was doing like so well. Like, this is great. I was like, oh, jazz for the class, even though, no. Um, and the worst part is I had to drive home from Dallas, like a 30, 40 minute drive. And I kind of wanted to keep it fresh in my mind, right? But by the time I went home, I made one critical error. I was like, that was like 45 minutes <laughs> of work. Yeah, I'm not gonna keep playing this, but it's just a funny, funny thing. Um, I say the word funny a lot, but really I do laugh at this stuff when the, the streams cut off. I'm really tired right now, but this is, this is hilarious. You'll be laughing. If you play it, you'll laugh. Could work on a phone with the alert for on your phone when the next turns up. Could. So I hope you got a really cool look at knowledge. Hope you play it for yourself. Um, demonstrating a lot of the other things that are part of the D card system is going to take a little bit more work. Uh, but this was a nice light introduction, and. Um, close that um, boop. and as you can see here my scores from when I actually tried are much higher um, there's the 44 I told you wait was that the right one no this may not be like my my ultimate file but I remember going for a long time oh and like some of my best my best run for I think it was um reverse order believe it or not like one of the red ones was better than my standard and I got up to like I want to say 80s 100 right um, my brother has an impressive score too of past 100 something crazy like that like this is ridiculous like how'd you get up that high but you know the advertisements for concentration training brain age with all the memory mastery like the world champion member uh, memory master could do like 40 back and I was struggling on four back. And what that means is they show you a problem, like a math problem, and then they move it off the page. And every time they move it down the page, they just keep moving new ones in. And you're supposed to remember the problem, the answer to the problem that you had that many back ago, right? And that guy could do 40 back. Just have a list of 40 solved facts in his head that just keeps like inputting new ones and shifting the old ones away. That's hard takes training takes practice all these things stress your your mental skills in different ways but yeah definitely that so we'll be seeing a lot of application for knowledge in the future I think knowledge as a skill is the foundation for just about everything we do that's complex as humans uh, we really do need it for just about every skill even even boop, even the dexterous skills and the reflexive skills, like knowledge feeds into all of those. It's pretty much the the most major core skill to talk about and the most complex. Um, yeah, so we'll see a little bit of that later, how knowledge feeds into reflex, how knowledge supports dexterity and how knowledge uh, supports timing. But that's pretty much it for today's stream. I hope you guys enjoy it. Play my game you know get back to me what you think it's really simple windows only too bad mac people uh maybe you run wine wine skin or something like that uh huh cpu you're supposed to play my other game cpu dreams <laughs> no just kidding um but yeah i feel like all of these are interesting other people did not but that's not my problem maybe if i release this on ios when this was we made this before ios existed no the iphone came out the first time I got back to college from summer break or winter break and we made these games I started blogging a little bit into my sophomore year and definitely into my junior year of college so yeah iPhone was out 
All right, guys. I'll see you guys next time. We'll talk more later. Peace.